Hey guys, we're on Gili Air at the moment, which is one of the islands off the coast of Lombok, but we're actually going to be talking about our previous stay in Ubud. Where we stayed was a homestay, Jowie House and Painter. The owner of the house, Putu, was so lovely. She was like this little, sweet, Balinese woman. She brought us breakfast every morning and we ate it on our little balcony. She booked everything that we needed. She was always checking on us, bringing us fruits, bringing us coffee. Overall, she just really took care of us and it just made the whole stay in Ubud 100% and I can't thank her enough. I hope she sees it. Send me an email if you see this, Putu. <laughs> The scumbag monkey forest. <laughs> on, our, bastards. <laughs> on our first day, we went down to the monkey forest, which is quite famous in Ubud. It's a really old temple area. Surrounded in a forest. In the middle of a little forest, I guess. Rainforest, um, actually. Are you going to do this or you want me to? So we saw the monkeys. I think it cost us like five bucks entry. It was totally worth it. Watching them all run around, hilarious. They're just like little people. I actually tried to feed them when I was lining up to buy bananas. I had two monkeys behind me lining up, like sitting down behind me waiting. And as a lady handed me the bananas, cheeky bastards. They just, <laughs> cheeky che bastards. They just, they just like jumped me. I had like four little bananas in my hand, and one just launched onto my shoulder took like one of them and the lady was like shouting at me like give banana give banana so I gave him one and then he kept like grabbing for more and then I had this giant monkey sitting at the floor like pulling out my my pants just <laughs> 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 it was an experience so anyway if you're gonna go to the monkey forest make sure you buy the bananas away from the monkeys because they know they fucking know Sensan. Oh, Sensan. Sensan. We spoke to our homestay host, Putu, and we asked her where the best Wurung is in Ubud, so she sent us to Sensan. And we finally found it. Huh? Yeah, look at the camera, mate. I am looking at the camera. Don't wander off. Anyway, when we finally found Sensan, delicious. From the outside, it looked pretty dodgy, but the food was incredible. The lady was super lovely. We pretty much ate there for the rest of our time in Ubud. We'll play it safe. I'm vegetarian anyway. Should I say that? You're not preaching. I'm not a preaching vegetarian, but we just think the safe option for Wurungs, maybe they're not the most sanitary kitchens that you've ever seen. Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> but the food that comes out is just the and best. It's the best. What I'm getting at is we order vegetarian every time. We're not disappointed. Touch wood. Didn't make us sick. It's what people think. They think if you eat at local places that you're going to get sick. I don't think that's the case. If you eat vegetarian, you're pretty safe. One of those authentic. <laughs> <laughs> one of those authentic experiences. <laughs> it was just one of those authentic experiences that we've had along the way. Before we left Ubered, we went there for lunch. We took all the camera and everything. And when we spoke to them, she'd actually has had that business running for 20 years, which is why the food is just so good. Because she's been doing it 20 years. Long time. Long time. And yeah, Sansan, check it out. Hello. How happy are you right now? The food is uh, amazing. Local quality and uh, made with love. Definitely made with love. So we just had uh, a shitload of raw wrong. And the best thing about Bali is that you get to walk it off in 30 degree temperature. Here we are walking the streets, but I can't tell you how many bloody times I'm following Josephine and she's uh, leading me on a wild goose check. I'll show you. I'll show you right now. Hey Joe. Yeah. Joe, where are you going? I'm going to find coffee. That's not where you're going. That's not where you're going. Fuck you. We're gonna hike the mountain tomorrow. 
Now Batang, Batang, Bip 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 That's gonna be a nice early wake up. Anyway, catch up. What's next? The VC. Volcano. Ah! <laughs> Do you know the name of it yet? Batu. Bata. Bata? Bati. Are you sure? Sure. Another thing our homestay owner booked for us was the Sunrise Volcano Climb, which I can highly recommend, even though you have to get up at 1.30 in the morning and literally hike vertically up slippery rock face for about two hours in the dark, it's well worth it at the end. What's that? The mountain. Anyway, so we had a mixed level of fitness. Our guide, Marty, was just, again, the best. I think he was like 24 or 25 local. He'd been climbing the mountain for the last six years. His English was, it was pretty good. I wouldn't say impeccable, but it was pretty up there. If somebody was struggling, he would make everybody stop. We're a family, we're a group, we're in this together. And we had lots of time, so it wasn't really a problem to stop and, and have a bit of a rest. It actually helped quite a bit. Definitely wasn't an easy thing to do at 4 a.m. in the morning, pitch black, but Marty really got us through. He was singing, chanting, he was making us laugh. That really helped take your mind off it. Especially because we've done zero walking in the last fucking week. <laughs> Especially since being in Bali, <laughs> that we hadn't done any exercise. Like I said in our last vlog, all we did was scooter to the restaurant, eat, scooter home, sleep. and sleep. It was really nice to kind of get like a bit of movement again in the body. When we're at the top, again, have met shitload of monkeys. It wasn't the best sunrise. There was quite a bit of fog and cloud around. But when the sun did pop out, beautiful. You'll see soon. So during the hike, Muddy actually gave us a lot of information of the history of the area as well. He told us about the original volcano, how when it erupted, in, it created this giant crater, which is now where the three remaining volcanoes are. He got to show us that, which is super interesting. We could actually see the steam coming from little pockets of the mountain. Crazy. We were on an active volcano. Don't do that every day. I made Marty give information session because I'm sure from now I've completely forgotten whatever he said. So I hope this helps. Getting ready for the morning. Josephine? Uh, hmm? Hmm? What time? How many hours? Four hours. Uh, Alright, good night. <laughs> We've made it to the trekking. I don't know if you can see all this traffic behind me. Can't really see anything, but you have to believe me, there's gotta be like 50 cars here. Like a herding goats up the mountain, I think. We made it to the top. Banana sandwich for breakfast. Yeah. How are we all feeling, guys? Yeah. Feeling good? Yeah. Feeling good? Yeah. Feeling good? Yeah. Feel the team? This is all the information about this volcano that you need to know. Morning guys! <laughs> <laughs> so we only did the top now, so we already in 1700 meters about sea level. Yes, Belgium, Germany and Brazil. Team. So we do <laughs> and we're doing so fast, only one hour and... 25 minutes maybe, I'm not sure. Is that a record? No. <laughs> 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 2,000 steps for the long leg. The long leg? Yeah, for the my, and for for my size. Short legs? So like, yeah. But in this size, <laughs> two and a half. <laughs> about five kilometers totally up and down. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Oh, mama. Another thing that our homestay host Putu organized for us was our private driver for the day after the mountain. We had our third breakfast when we got back at 11 and then we had our private driver arrive to pick Bill, Lars, Lana and I up. He drove us to where we wanted to go so I wanted to go and see the giant banyan trees. There's a whole region of these banyan trees. The oldest one is up to 700 years old. To be honest I don't know if our driver really knew where it was so we found this giant. It could have been you know 500 years old but it was massive like massive. It was huge. 
is almost unbelievable how big this thing was. When we arrived, with all the wind in the air, it just gave it this really like spiritual vibe, which was really nice because there's the history behind these trees and the spirits in the area and how they kind of attach to these trees. So when we arrived, we really felt that kind of atmosphere from it, walking around, touching. I have, I have goosebumps. I don't know if you can, you can see that, but I have goosebumps thinking about it. It was magical. Um, he also took us to the famous rice terraces. It's a tourist hotspot. We're pretty tired by this point. We just had lunch in the restaurant, got a beautiful view, and then um, we went for a short walk, but actually came back after we took a few photos and videos, and I just slept in the car for I don't know how long. Last destination he took us to were the waterfalls, Teganungan waterfall. I don't know, Google it, you'll see. Because it had rained the night before, there was just this ridiculous amount of water coming off the waterfall. Also made it a little bit brown, so he described it to us as like a big brown like chocolate milkshake, which was hilarious. It was really hot. Walked down to the bottom, thinking that we were gonna cool off, but actually when we got down to the bottom, the air was so moist and so hot that we got a short video and we just had to get to the top. We'd already climbed a mountain that day, so what's another 165 stairs gonna do? Build those bonds. Buns of steel. It's all about building those buns. Buns, haunt. <laughs> So overall in Ubud, we did Monkey Forest, Volcano Sunrise Hike, and a private tour. That's a wrap. <laughs>